The erosion of our personal rights seems to be a higher priority this session of the unicameral, not to mention the narrative from national candidates running for president. Of the hundreds of bills introduced into the legislature, it's, it's surprising how many unwittingly infringe on our rights of ownership while trying to be more fair to certain special interest groups. All the bills that address wealth redistribution, inspections, permissions, and studies, discrimination, or new tax laws, including environmental and commercial procedures, are gradually chipping away at our freedoms to enjoy our property and to be able to live by the golden rule. Bills like LB 433 by Senator Matt Hansen limiting the landlord's ability to manage their own rental property, LB 243 by Senator Tim Gregert that looks for reasons to tell farmers how to farm, LB 369 by Senator Tony Vargas that requires notice of immigration enforcement, as well as his LB 163 that expands the potential for voter fraud with mail-in ballots. Not to mention LB 502 by Senator Mickett Hunt, making it illegal to inquire into anyone's immigration status, or examples of the liberal elites controlling senators who have little understanding of our core values of fairness, truth, sustainability, and integrity. These liberal senators have taken positions that are unwittingly violating the golden rule and forces law-abiding citizens to appease the expectations of the entitled individuals who have little or no ownership in the property in question or know how capitalization, capitalism works. This is the beginning of the slippery slope of socialism where government owns everything and where everyone is equally miserable. It has come to the point where property owners no longer own their property but must rent it from the government through the taxes that they must pay to keep it. Any attempt at legislation that, that discriminates is in and itself discriminatory. It makes special protected classes of individuals or groups that senators feel deserve special treatment and consideration. These groups become victims with their numbers becoming ever larger voting blocks. Who will probably vote for their advocates, especially if the voting laws are relaxed so they don't have to prove that they're citizens and even eligible? How do we stop this madness? Our forefathers warned us that we are a constitutional republic with freedoms if we can keep it. We the people run this country and we hire politicians who are supposed to know how, management, our, how to manage our resources in a way that has been proven to work. If we continue to hire individuals with little or no business understanding who spend our money to get their votes from those who pay little or no taxes, we get the politicians we deserve. There is no need to study history, which is simply stories of all the mistakes that have happened in the past. What must be done is perfectly obvious and is ridiculous to study all the stupid things that didn't work. History books don't tell us that. Business, economics, science, and math books do. So when someone says we must study history to keep from repeating it is actually part of the problem. There are innumerable things that have gone, been shown to gone wrong and do not work. So why study the wrong answers instead of the right ones? This is Keith Kuby wishing you the best in making the world a better place.